and welcome to Landline. I'm Pip Courtney. This week I'm in Mora in Western Australia, where this multi-million dollar high-tech citrus orchard has given the quiet Wheatbelt town a big financial boost. As a horticulture business, it will produce more than 15, 20 million dollars, plus it's 40 to 50 jobs. And for the community of Mora, um, that means it's, got, it's been future-proofed as well. Also on today's show, from Peru to Australia, the rise of alpacas. Australia's well and truly up there, yeah, been one of the top countries by, by quite a lot. And a peek behind the scenes of a landline shoot in the top end. Nearly 20 years ago, a West Australian couple decided to future-proof their grain and pork operation against the impacts of climate change. After a lot of research, they diversified into citrus. They've spent millions creating what they call the orchard of the future. But it wasn't easy. For four horror years, their plans were buffeted by the global financial crisis, drought, a tornado, as well as unseasonal frosts and storms. But now the business is thriving and China's appetite for citrus has made the future look even sweeter. You could never accuse farmers Sue Middleton and Michael Brennan of putting all their ag eggs in one basket. On 5,000 hectares at Wongan Hills, two hours northeast of Perth, they grow winter crops, oat and hay for export, run 1,600 merinos and 12,500 pigs. To value add their grain, they run it through their own mill to feed to the pigs. WA is having a dry season, but this region, which has long been regarded as safe, is hanging in. Wongan Hills is fantastic country, you know, it's it's considered some of the best country in the wheat belt of Western Australia. You always get your season in Wongan. Despite the safe climate and the diverse business mix, 20 years ago the couple were shaken by a report predicting climate change would cause a significant decrease in their winter rain and an increase in the number and severity of summer rainstorms. Did that prediction come true? Yeah, absolutely. The predictions were that we would lose 20% of our growing season rainfall by 2050. I think the only thing that wasn't accurate about the predictions was the time frames. It happened a lot sooner than anyone thought. Much, much sooner. The time frame predicted for the 20% drop in rainfall was 50 years. It happened in 20. After reading the report, the couple decided to prepare for a drier future by finding reliable water and building a business around it. They looked at a variety of crops and settled on citrus. So when we looked at the market opportunity in citrus, 60% of all the fruit that Western Australians were eating were coming from interstate or overseas. And we thought we basically it was an import replacement strategy that we could come in and fill that part of the market. And we'd always have the freight advantage mm. and be able to supply to the market in a shorter time period as well. So the fruit was fresh into the market and no matter what happened, the prices crashed on the eastern seaboard. Here, we'd have the freight advantage at least. Their plan was big and bold so they needed an equity partner. They found one in the Gillen Group, a family company based in Melbourne. They're a construction and property company wanting to get into agriculture. We're forever in their debt and acknowledge their contribution to this business because we just would not be here if it wasn't for them. It's definitely a key opportunity for family farms because if you want to grow fast or you want to grow exponentially, and this project's an example of that, you need to bring in outside equity. On an undeveloped sheep block at Moora, an hour northwest of the home farm, Sue and Michael literally bet their farm on oranges and mandarins. The first trees went in nine years ago, and more than $20 million later, Moora Citrus is a 170,000 tree orchard 
selling fruit into the WA market as planned and exporting to Asia, which wasn't. While the underground water here was guaranteed, there was no guarantee a bore would hit an aquifer sweet spot. Drilling this bore was an expensive roll of the dice. This was a, you know, almost a half a million dollar investment and we didn't necessarily know that we were going to hit water. We had all of the hydrologists' reports and we had all of the, you know, the experts' opinion that, that there would be water. But in putting this down, um, you know, it's, and it's a, goes down over 350 metres, there was this real risk that this could have just trickled. But as happened, um, it was a sensational first bore and we hit a gusher. We actually currently have around about eight kilometres of mainline that run through the orchard. And then off all of the main lines, we actually then take off other pipe work to actually then start feeding the, the lines for the actual citrus trees. So we currently have around about 100, uh, 1,300 kilometres worth of drip line on the orchard feeding 170,000 trees. So we've actually used some moisture probe technology to actually work out where the water's actually moving. So we've actually found that if we pulse irrigate lots of times during the day, we actually keep the area where the roots are nice and wet so the trees have a chance to actually pick up the water and nutrients. I think probably the infrastructure and the stuff you can't see is actually what makes it the orchard of the future. We have got millions of dollars of infrastructure underneath the ground. We have the capacity to get water out to the far corner of this orchard with the same amount of you know pumping power as the closest tree to the pump shed and we've invested in the technology that enables us to only put the water and the fertigation on the tree that the tree needs so we um, don't impact our water table so you know we're we're also efficient then we're able to use only the amount of water and the amount of food that the plant needs. Local citrus grower Shane Kay offered his packing shed for their first crop. Now he manages the orchard. The property's well laid out, it's got great infrastructure, it's new soil, it's got very low uh, incidence of pests and diseases because of it and it's isolation, so it certainly makes it a good property to manage. These are the washies from yesterday's mm. pick. Some, some of them look pretty good actually. Mm, good size. Even though full production is five years away, the aim to take a chunk of WA's citrus market off South Australian growers has been achieved. It's pretty juicy anyway. Wow, look at that juice. The guys in South Australia do a fantastic job. I mean, they were our inspiration for what we wanted to do. We looked at how they packed, we looked at the quality of their fruit, we looked at how they supplied right across you know, the whole growing season, and we went, that's exactly who we want to be. Mm. But we want to be the same as those guys, and then, you know, really, what's happened in the market since then is a lot more of the fruits going offshore, and so that's really then made it possible for us to be able to achieve our goals. Michael Brennan says China's appetite for Australian citrus meant they started exporting earlier than planned. We've had some opportunities with people coming and knocking on our door and saying, look, can we take some of your citrus to China? So it started off that about three years ago, and now it's about a third of our production goes for Southeast Asia and China in particular. As with a lot of other exporting companies, we're inundated with approaches for orders. We just can't, can't supply, so there's, there seems to be huge potential. Yeah. So it seems a great time for this orchard to be coming online. It's perfect. Um, you know, the orchard's coming into coming of age, so the production's coming on and the demand is there, so the timing is great. On Shane Kay's land, they've built a giant new packing shed. It will be operational by the end of the year. It's massive. Why such a big investment? Well, as the uh, Mora Citrus Orchard grows, um, to to be able to handle the capacity, we, we need something of that size. It, it, uh, it certainly looks looks big, but we'll soon fill it up with machinery and cool rooms, so uh, it'll fill in quickly. Has it got people thinking about investing in horticulture? Sue says this area could be a new horticultural hotspot. Do you think she's correct? I do. It certainly is a new area. It's not a citrus growing area historically. And that was because of access to water, but now there is available water from aquifers under this area. So they're, they're currently assessing the, 
the, the viability and sustainability of that aquifer. So the intent is to potentially have two to 3,000 hectares of horticulture in this area. Perth fruit wholesaler Egidio De Jesus says his customers were making inquiries weeks before the first fruit hit the market. He says its popularity is easy to understand. A US naval might be more than 40 days old, while a WA naval might be just four. He says fresher fruit tastes better. And he explained to this Eastern States reporter a quirk of WA shoppers. They love Western Australian, all, all, anything Western Australian, but especially the citrus, they love it. They are the very anti-produce that comes from Eastern states or overseas. But, you know, we've got beautiful fresh produce in WA, so we should be supporting it. And, and we've seen that more and more. Shoppies are asking for Western Australian fruit. These oranges are headed for both big supermarkets and the independents. Yeah, what do you think of it? Isn't it beautiful? And it's in store where Sue and her stepdaughter Lizzie Brennan get the word out. Well, you're in luck. This is only 200 k's up the road. Do you want some hug? When people come into store, I think they kind of expect it to be a promotional person. So when you say, oh, would you like to try some orange from my farm? People are sort of do a double take and they go, oh, really, from your farm? And I think that that level of connection and the authenticity that people are looking for when they understand that you care just as much about the food that they're eating as they do, I think it gives an element of surprise to people um, that they don't expect. So you're trying some of our mid-season nables, they're a Washington nable. Um, Mora Citrus aims to get fruit onto shelves three days from picking. Store manager Tim Jaggett says it does make a noticeable difference to flavour, which he says trucked in interstate fruit struggles to match. People always talk about, you know, you, there's nothing quite like actually grabbing an apple from a tree and tree ripened apples. This is as close as you're going to get to actually having a tree in your back garden and actually uh, growing them yourself. 80% of my sales are done on looks and price and then there's 20% on the actual taste. Now, once you've tried it once, which is the, the main game, then you're coming back week after week and the customers know the name. They look for it every year. The reason they taste so good is because we've picked it at the point where its acid and sugar level is right. We get it to the customer when that's absolutely at its premium. So when you eat that orange, it just tastes sensational. And, and, and you've got, you know, 10 to 12 days to have it in your fruit bowl because we haven't taken 10 days to get it to you. Bringing Lizzie into the business to manage promotions and social media has made Sue and Michael very happy as future-proofing their business was as much about managing climate change as building a strong business to hand to the next generation. The impact that, you know, Mora Citrus has goes beyond that, that orange. It, it goes beyond the fruit bowl. It actually it creates, it's created an awesome community um, around Mora. But perhaps the most unexpected happy upside of the venture is this. The 20 strong crew from Tonga is here under the seasonal worker program. For most, it's their fifth year working here. And not only are Michael and Sue thrilled to have such reliable workers, they've been to Tonga to see the impact of what the pickers call their orange money. Having the Tongans in the orchard singing and joking and laughing and they're just friendly and really nice people to get along with and I can't speak high enough of them. They're just great. The Tongans are earning five times what they'd earn at home. We love it to be here every year. Mostly the money is good. Are there lots of people back home who would like to be doing what you're doing? Yeah, everybody would dream about to come over here. It's pretty good. 
when I take the money back home, I can see a lot at home. And my family back home, they're really proud of it. Not only that, the little communities. And me and my husband as well, we're really proud of what we do. Does it mean that you can buy your own house? Yeah, we just build our own house in our own land. This orchard has given the town of Moora a big boost, as well as creating new jobs and injecting millions into the local economy. It's proved up the potential of the underground water, an asset councillor Colin Gardner calls liquid gold. Everything for the last hundred years has happened in the old traditional form of, of cropping and mixed farming, which is low um, human input. And so changing that mentality and knowing how you can value add, it just gives you so much more potential for jobs and then that ripple effect, which then goes into your whole economy. Mora Citrus and another venture or two out there have sort of been trailblazers um, to show what can be done. And so we're optimistic and there, is, there are projects in the wings where that water can then turn intensive agriculture, horticulture onto the farming land that's out there. To guard against overuse of the rain-fed aquifer, Councillor Gardner says all water applications have to be approved by the state government. If this was still a sheep paddock, it would produce about $150,000 worth of income a year and there would be less than a job involved in this. As a horticulture business, it will produce more than $15, $20 million worth of turnover, which is going into the local economy, plus it's 40 to 50 jobs. So the, the difference is absolutely extraordinary. And for the community of Mora, um, that means it's, got, it's been future-proofed as well. It's not just about us future-proofing our family farm, it's future-proofed a local community. <laughs> Thank you.